Numbers 16, 36 through 40. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, You know, we read that oftentimes in Scripture. The Word is God revealed to us. Oftentimes, it's, it, the Word is His will for everybody, how they should live. But His Spirit will direct us in more of a way that is more personal. It's more one-on-one -on -one type direction. It, it, his his word tells us the things we shouldn't do most of the time. His spirit guides us to the directions of things we are to do. At this time, we got to remember the word wasn't writ yet written down. So when God spoke, that was the word. That was all they had to base off of. They didn't have the luxury of going to scriptures and seek guidance out that way. And they didn't have the luxury of having the Spirit put on them what they should be doing. They just waited till the Word came. Otherwise, they just lived the way they lived. There's always a sense of right and wrong. But there's no true sense of direction without the Word. That's why Moses was such a key person, because he brought, he was the first one God used to bring Scripture to the people. The first one God used to tell them, this is what you do, and this is what you don't do. And the Lord speaking to Moses is very important here also, because Korah was starting to say, I'm in control. But the Lord is still speaking with Moses in this time, which shows Korah was just speaking for himself, because otherwise the Lord would have started speaking to Korah instead of to Moses, which shows that there's nothing really to be decided. God was staying true to who he had called, because Moses, the only time God doesn't use us anymore is when we no longer are a vessel to be used by God. He don't abandon us, but oftentimes we backslide from Him to where He can't use us until we come back and submit to Him. Moses hadn't done this, so there's no point. Moses still lived quite a while after this. He's fully capable. There's no point for God to have someone else come up at this point when Moses was the one God called. Well, speak to Elsner, the son of Mo. Oh, I lost my son of Aaron, the priest, and he take up censers out of the burning. and scatter the fire in the distance. For they are hard. You know, these censers would become a very important part of worship. At this point in time, they really don't got the laws of worship. But they would involve these censers later. Worship was always a very special thing at this point in time. It was... It was only the priest's responsibility to handle these. They had a very important job, a sacred job God called them to do. Scripture mentions, mentions how we're called to be priests through Christ. We're all, all believers are called to a priesthood. It's a special sacred thing we're called to do. Some of us are act treated like Eli's sons did and don't realize how how we should respect our calling from God to be His, then some of us react in the way we should by completely being submissive to Him. Now, the form of worship we do today is different than then, but the idea of it is giving our all to God, giving our best to Him. 
allowing Him to be Lord. That's still key in worship then and is now. It's about Him, not about us. When we're used by God, it's about having the opportunity to serve Him. Korah had the idea of these people are going to look at me because I'm doing this now. Moses had the idea the Lord just found me part of His plan and He's allowed me the opportunity to serve Him. The problem with that idea of Korah is because if the, oftentimes if that's your motivation, then the people, if they change their views, you change. But if your devotion is simple like Moses is serving God, there's times when people's hearts weren't towards God. But Moses' heart still was serve God. The people, of course, he wanted the people to turn back to God, but he wasn't going to turn from God to go after the people. Korah would have been one of them leaders that would have been willing to do that. He would have been one of them preachers out there today that would have watered down the gospel so people wouldn't have left his congregation. 38. The censors of these sinners against their own souls, let them make them wide plates for a covering of the against their souls, let them make them a wide place for a covering of the altar, for they offered them before the Lord. Therefore they are hallowed, and they shall be a sign of the children of Israel. You know, these centuries would no longer be used because this family would be wiped out. But God wanted to use this as a statement. They were... Some of these people weren't wanting to serve the Lord. They were just following in the wrong direction. <clears throat> it's like some of these people out there today that follow the wrong teaching. Some of them genuinely think they're serving the Lord. And they may have been people core tricked into thinking they were serving the Lord. And it's God's using this as a remembrance for people to realize they need to listen to the one He put in charge. Not the one they looked for. Not the one they wanted to be in charge. Because ultimately, Moses wasn't the one in charge. God was. If Korah would have been put in charge, Korah would have been the one in charge. But with Moses where he was, God was the one in charge. Korah never received word from God. And so Korah wouldn't have been able to base anything off of what he was doing based on what God wanted. But Moses interacted with God. He talked to God. So Moses could have went to God with a a question of what the people had and then give back God's decision. Moses, I'm sure, had his own opinion on things. But Moses went to the Lord No matter what Moses' opinion on things was, he did what the Lord wanted from him. And that's how we need to act as a church today. We need to... Our opinions matter, but ultimately if the Lord's leading us to do something different, we need to do what the Lord has. Verse 40. Now verse 39. Now the priest took those brass censers which those who were burnt had offered and they made into a wide plate covering the altar to be the material of the children of Israel that no stranger who is not of the descendants of Aaron come near the incense before the Lord that he may not be as the sons of Korah and his company, as the Lord said to him, by the hand of Moses. You know, sometimes God's got to put things in our life for us to be able to remember. 
Sometimes He leaves us with things not always what we want, but so we can remember what He's done. Sometimes with Jacob, remember how he hurt his hip and was that way the rest of his life. It was reminding him of who God was and to remind him to be submissive to God's will. This is a similar thing. It's to remind the people, and more of a warning to the people, because if they would have went in to see this altar, it was a sign you shouldn't be here. Because this altar would have been in a place that only the high priest should have been in. Sometimes he has to leave us with reminders because it benefits us. Sometimes reminders ain't the easiest thing to take, though.